part six. Uh, you remember in uh, part five how cold it was in the shop? It was uh, below freezing. Here in Arkansas, it's time for our semi-annual bath and shave. It is springtime, it's warmer, the birds are chirping outside, and yes, it's me. I've been uh, really distracted. I've had a lot of other projects kind of slide in on me, which like, for example. Anyway, let's get back on this little mini mill. Today we're gonna get this motor a little bit closer to being mounted. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of assembly here so some of this maybe makes a little more sense where I'm headed. All right, this is the first time I've ever tried to put these parts together and uh, kind of back and forth on how to do it. I've never even used ball nuts before in my life, but I'm pretty sure that if you pull this cardboard tube they ship with, I'm pretty sure if you pull that out, uh, the ball bearings will fall out, I believe. I may be wrong. I don't know. I'm scared to do it. Uh, in order to get this all in there, I'm going to try to put the ball nut on. And I believe, I'm just assuming, which I actually looked online, there's not a whole lot of information about this. I'm guessing you uh, just hold that tube on there, keep it on your screw, and let this thing load itself on there, without hopefully without losing any your ball bearings. Hey! Just that easy. First time ever, guys. You, know, you can see, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but I can feel just the slightest little wiggle. So even, you know, ball screws and ball nuts aren't going to be completely backlash free, I can already tell. I've heard guys talk about changing the ball bearings out to uh, just a, you know, I don't know, a thousandth or something bigger, I, you know, to tighten it up a little more. You know, maybe I might try that down the road. It feels pretty good to me, though. Oh, only thing is, I just put it on backwards. <laughs> I need these threads to the front. Oh, Lord. Now, I hope I can get it back on this cardboard tube the same way. I don't want to be chasing the ball bearings all over the shop. All right, let's turn it around and do it the right way this time. All right, remember this part we made? That was with that big 15 16 tap. Let's see if I can get this thing to come in from underneath. All right, remember the, the bearing setup, the steel washer, you know, ball bearing steel washer on each side. I suppose if you wanted to get real fancy, you could have uh, countersunk these bolts, bolt heads too, but it would just be purely cosmetic. I couldn't see any reason to do it. I gotta make a coupler to mount the motor out here. Once we get some standoffs and a coupler made, this axis is close to being done. Uh, I'm just kind of eyeballing. I mean, I'm sure you could buy. Uh, motor coupler, but they're not really want to wait, so looks like if I take a piece of a one inch long stock, I'm gonna make a pretty I'll just make my own motor coupler. It's a piece of uh oil hardening steel I bought for another project and we'll use this to make our motor coupling.
after that pilot hole, I'm gonna go back with a letter C drill bit. That's um, I'm gonna sneak up on that 248 dimension. I don't want it to be sloppy. my motor coupler so far. This side I ended up drilling out to be a, a quarter inch. I, changed, I, I tried to sneak up on it a little bit with um, a C and then a D but I ended up going quarter inch anyway. My other one ended up being uh, 5 16 But if it's great on the motor it's a uh, you almost gotta be careful, it wants to get stuck on there. It fits so perfect on that. The uh, ball screw side is not quite as tight of a fit. It's just a little bit of wiggle there, but hopefully, we can do a little bit of lining and set screws will fix that. Alright, let's talk uh, uh, theory here for a second. I'm not a machinist, I think I've made that pretty clear. You probably watch me bumbling through some of this. Say, so looking from the top down on my vise on the milling machine, I'm going to put some parallels in there. Chuck this coupling up crossways like this, and then from the top, bring an end mill down. Pretend this is the end mill, or a side view would be, you know, bringing my uh, an end mill down. If I run this over. And I take a strip of paper, like here's just a piece of uh, printer paper. If I hold a piece of paper loosely in there, as I come over with this end mill, when it grabs that paper, I'm about a thousandth away. Let's just say for the example, this is a one inch piece of steel here. And this is a half inch end mill. So once that touches to find the center of this, I've got to use, you know, half of a, my stock and half of this uh, this end mill so this would be a, a quarter of an inch and uh, this would be a half an inch once it touches that paper I need to zero my dials move over three quarters of an inch and I should be drilling up right on the center line The stock I used for my coupler, it was sold uh, by Enco as 5 eighths, I think. If you measure it, it's actually 16 millimeter. So it's not exactly what they said it was, but. So uh, if, I, if I move over half of that stock, I've got a half inch end mill in there. I've came up with, I need to move over 0 0.565 to be on center line. That should be 0.5. All right, five, six, five. It looks centered. Looks pretty dang good. All right, I'm gonna lock the table down and switch over to drill bit. Okay, you got to use a uh, center drill on this. If you put, you know, I'm gonna tap this for uh, 832 set screws. If you just put a number 29 drill bit, you'll never drill a hole in there. The drill bit's gonna instantly skate off to one side or the other. But these center drills are super stubby and stout. They won't drift like that. Came out pretty good. Uh, these are 832. It kind of dawned on me while I was drilling. So I thought, well, maybe I should have went metric, but I, I just I can't think metric. I don't know. They come in, you know, set screws come in different lengths. And the way I like to think of it, 
See this this side of uh, coupling has a thicker sidewall than this side. I like for my set screw to match that wall thickness. I mean, you don't want to have this thing rotating with a whole bunch of screw out there swinging around in the wind grabbing stuff. I like it to where once it's seated on the shaft, there's it's it's flush with the outsides. I've got a uh, two different lengths here. My big fingers, I can't hardly hold on to these little guys. I think one of them's a quarter inch. I think the other one's uh, three sixteenths. I think. Uh, get my standard Allen set out. Just to mix and match of metric standard. I suppose you could probably buy this coupling. Um, MSC, somebody like that probably has this size combination you want, but really, it's pretty easy to make, especially if you have a lathe. Uh, this kind of stuff like this, I would just make. I don't usually buy. I don't like waiting on the shipping and stuff. While we're on the subject of set screws, you remember in one of the earlier videos, I made this little set screw here just out of a piece of quarter 20 all thread or something. That's fine in this situation here because this is an aluminum block that's clamping onto an aluminum ball nut. The only thing this set screw is required to hold onto is just the friction of those ball bearings, which in a CNC situation, I would hope that's very small. This set screw does very little. It just keeps this ball nut from rotating. Now these, on the other hand, these are gonna have torque and some RPM, stuff like that. You need to use you know, real store-bought hardened set screws on your motor couplers if you make them. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, tighten the set screw down on this on this um, ball screw enough to make a mark on it and I'm going to pull, pull it back off and I'm actually going to file a flat spot by hand where that mark is in. See that mark there? Of course, I'm going to come in with a file now, and I'm going to probably file about twice the width of that set screw mark, so I have a little bit of adjustment. Ah, there's, you could have chucked that into a metal machine or something, I'm sure, but... I don't know, in my opinion, a small flat like that's fine. Just do it with a file, it'll only take a second. All right, I think I'm going to cut it here for now. This video is going to end up too long. Uh, motor coupling's done. Next up, i got to make some standoffs to finish mounting the motor. So, And I you know, hope I didn't talk too much in this one, but it seemed like there's a lot of things I needed to explain or explain myself. We'll see you in the next one.